Hi, how many people are there on this planet? Is there too many? Are there too few? I don't know. But every person has the right to be on this planet and to develop themselves. But then I found some quotes about population and what Gurdjieff had to say about it. And I'm sure you've been reading the books, hopefully, and you know that he talks about how we um, need a certain learned being to help uh, the humanity population to become attuned so they can work with the cosmic harmony of the universe. And that many people don't want to do this, as we know they're asleep rather than awake, and we're trying to wake up so that we can be part of all this. And he said, like, why are so many people seem to be asleep? Though I have noticed in the last year, there's a lot more awake than I was aware of. And it's so good to see that there's people out there wanting to do something and change themselves and be the true person they're supposed to be. So I found some Gurdjieff quotes from all and everything. So all these are from Beelzebub's Towers to his grandson. And it's about the population in the world. I'm going to try and read them in order. So we start with page 91. It could clearly be seen that the numbers of these free brain beings was gradually increasing. And from time to time, they did something which was never done by free brain beings on other planets. They would suddenly, without rhyme or reason, begin destroying one another's existence. It was sometimes very noticeable also that from this horrible processes of theirs, their numbers are rapidly diminished. But on the other hand, during periods when there was a lull, their numbers also very noticeably increased. Seeing the fecundity of these biped beings, we assume that this had been done with a forethought in view of the necessity that they should exist in large numbers for the needs of the maintenance of the common cosmic harmonious movement. So, Here's a Bob's Towers says, why do we all go to war? Why do, why do men and women war, whether it's in their personal lives or nation against nation or continent against continent, continent? It's the only planet that does it, apparently. No other beings fight each other like we do. So is it part of the cosmic workings? Does it help the development of the universe? I'd like to think not because war brings so much sadness, so much misery, and doesn't really seem to do anyone any good except for those warmongers that are sitting in their offices making lots of money from it. You know, we need peace on this planet, peace. But Gurdjieff seems to hint that sometimes war is needed. And it's really weird that we go around killing ourselves for no rhyme or reason. And I find it quite strange how people sign up to be in the army, knowing that they're going to go ahead and kill people. As Bill Hicks used to say, the great comedian, you know, they're all just hired killers, soldiers and such like. So I know I, when I was a kid, I remember there was lots of war films on, so war was glorified. And you were made to feel as though you were doing it for your country and, you know, all that kind of thing. But then I read many soldiers' biographies or colonels or whatever, people in the higher, higher ranks, and they say how soul-destroying it is to see people be killed, families be destroyed and torn apart, even just going to having to look at the aftermath of something that's happened. You know, bombs drop, they've got, someone's got to clean it up. You know, it's not good for anybody's psyche to have to clean up them broken up bodies. But anyway, on with, with all and everything. We all know war is not good. Page 293. Owing to the progressive deterioration of the quality of the radiative vibrations of their presences, in the process of the existence required from them by nature, the length of their existence on the one hand was still further diminished, and on the other hand, their birth rate was increased. So even though our lives shortened at some point, so Gurdjieff is saying in the past, we used to live for longer lives, far longer lives. And you've probably read in the Bible, for example, Noah lived for 900 years and other uh, theologies and other creation myths, not just Christianity in the uh, Bible. Other religious books say about how in the past, 
people lived for much longer. They had longer lifespans. But all this warring has helped to bring us, shorten our lifespans and also our disconnect to the divine and to the harmonious way of living. We're not living our full potential. And that yet at the same time, we have more people being born. It's as if you know, we, should, we live these short lives, but we bring forth more people. And people say it's their legacy, their children. And that's why people have children. Good on them. Let's bring more children into the world, but let's treat them well. But that's going to increase how many people are on the planet. And I'm not saying I'm anti how many people are on the planet, but we need to have all these, like there's 8 billion people on this planet. It'd be nice if we could be a bit more friendly towards each other and have um, a bit more of a community kind of thing going on than a division. And obviously that comes from many different ways, you know, whether people are nationalistic or patriotic or such like, or just, you know, we know why people get divided up. We should be all living together as one humanity. So this next one's quite a long one. So this is page 1104. That uncommon learned Kurd Atanark failed to understand what was most important, namely that the vibrations required by nature, which have to be formed from the radiations issuing from beings both during their existence, as well as from the process of their Rasguanu, death, remember that's what death means, have no significance quantitatively, but only qualitatively. So quality is more important than quantity. It is possible that Atanark would have understood this also if he had known the details of the results that had been obtained after those conditions had been established, which was specially created by the most saintly labours of the essence-loving, very saintly Ashiata Shirmash. And I've done shows on, about Ashiata Shirmash, very important character in Beelzebub's Tales. Um, I've also recorded some uh, important chapters to go with Ashiata Shirmash and about who he was. You know, in Shirmash, in many of the old religions, was a sun god, a guy who taught solar power. That's what Gurdjieff said he came here to teach, teach and sell solar power. So do look up Ashiata Shirmash if you've not been reading your Beelzebub's Tales recently. Anyway, carrying on. During that period, their rate of mortality and their birth rate began to decline. Their birth rate declined because when they were existing more or less as is becoming for free centered beings and the radiations issuing from them were yielding vibrations more or less akin to the vibrations required from them by nature, both for the most great common cosmic trogo auto ego crat in general and for the maintenance of the moon and Anulios in particular, then great nature did not fail to adapt herself to the diminishing of their birth rate. So when there's more people in tuned and being a free, proper free centered beings, there's less need for so many humans on the planet because when we're more attuned to ourselves and more harmonious, we live in a more harmonious way. And it's saying that it's only when people aren't attuned and aren't developing themselves and are being these lopsided man number one, man number two, or man number three, but not fully centered. That's when we end up with a higher birth rate and more and more people come to this planet, probably because the planet needs to try and get more people attuned or, or harmonized. And so we've got to put more babies out there just hoping that they'll grow up into being real people, real man, real woman, real eye, developing their real eye because there's too many people not doing that. And so it's the lunatic asylum that Gurdjieff speaks about. So we've got 8 billion people on this planet at the moment. And we can help that by developing ourselves and becoming proper free brain beings. So page 1226, sort of a recap of what I've just said. The deteriorating quality of their radiations required for higher common cosmic purposes ins insistently demanded for the maintenance of equilibrium an increase of the quantity of the arisings and the existence of these lives. So when qualities are deteriorating, when there's not enough learned beings out there, then more people are born. And you might be thinking, well, so if there's lots of learned being and the population shrinks, what if I don't get people born into that? Well, you know, 
I suppose we'll, if we can become learned beings, hopefully we'll go on to the next stage in life. You know, this is our chance to try it. I know I've talked before about reincarnation and coming back again and again and again. Might not get the chance next time. So let's try and do it this time so that we can evolve and get off into the next stage. And last one from All and Everything, page one, two, three, four. Great nature has already long ceased to have need for such a phenomena as mass psychosis for her equilibrium. Rather the contrary, such a periodically arising inherency in people compels her always to new adaptations, as for instance, increasing the birth rate, changing the tempo of the general psyche, and so on. Maybe that's what we're going through at the moment. Maybe there is, you know, her equilibrium needs a little shake up. So as we know, we seem to be living in very interesting times, 2020 and 2021. Maybe that psyche is changing and we want to make sure we're on the side of conscience, awakening and being there for nature and the divine source, his endlessness, as Gurdjieff says. So please read the books of written by Gurdjieff, Ospensky, C.S. Not, Arad, Maurice Nicole. If you know how to do the exercises, do the exercises. Joseph Cassisi has written a brilliant book about the exercises that Gurdjieff put out for people. And I know some people say, oh, these exercises were for certain people. Gurdjieff gave them out to certain people. Well, that was over a hundred years, well, about a hundred years ago. We're in the 21st century. We need them exercises now. And if they fit for you, do them and let them help you develop. So peace and love to you all. And let's do Gurdjieff work.